Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our first panel discussion and a truly interesting one on that. Uh, knowing your customer is the key to success for any brand and brands today have an unprecedented insight about their consumers. However, how does this data deluge help a brand's target audience better and focus on consumers who may not have uniform needs? Well, to discuss more on the topic, has marketing changed from knowing your customer to knowing your customer segment? Well, we have an eclectic panel with us here today. First up, let's welcome our session chair, Preetha Atre, Head Marketing, Twitter India. Also joining Preetha would be our panelists, uh, Deepti Sampath, the Vice President Marketing and Ancillary Services, Vistara, Kunal Bhartwaj, Senior Director Marketing, Upstocks. We've got Manandar Bali, Head of Brand Marketing, Vidantu, Rohit Doshi, Dosi, the Director of Microsoft Advertising, Business, Inmobi, and we've got Vishal Sharma, the Head of Marketing, Sleepwell, joining us. Well, thank you firstly to all our panelists for taking out your valuable time. With this, I'd like to invite you all on the screen and uh, pass on the live baton to our session chair, Preetha, to take it forth with her panel. Over to you, Preetha, and I hope everyone's doing great. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, and I hope the audience has been enjoying the session till now and uh, look forward to an extremely interesting and engaging panel discussion. A big warm welcome to the panelists who are here with me today. Um, and uh, we are here to talk about an extremely interesting topic. Um, like you said, marketing has changed and it's moving from knowing your customer to knowing your customer segment. In fact, the past two years have not been easy for anybody and it has been extremely challenging for the uh, Customer behavior, customer, uh, um, the way the customers are, what the customers are looking for, a lot of it has changed and we have had to adapt and be nimble and flexible to go with their ever increasing or changing requirements. Um, no longer is it a one size fit all uh, situation and personalization, especially when businesses are scaling or we're looking at marketing at scale, it will not cut ice unless we know our customers and our customer segments. Um, in fact, this is something that's extremely interesting is everyone around us is a customer of some kind of product. We ourselves are customers and consumers of products. And the way we speak and communicate with our family, with our friends, with our colleagues, uh, with our business acquaintances, it's all different. We speak and communicate with them extremely differently. And it's these differences and this variety and traits which are important for brands to understand. And, and today, we've also moved away from the way we used to look at customer segmentation. Gone are the days of looking at it purely from a demographic or a geographic perspective. Today, we have to look at something much more deeper. We've got to engage with our consumers based on their common interests, their passion points. And in fact, we need to tap into these communities, which is like an organic army with varied voices, many faces, yet one common glue that holds them together. And uh, people no longer just look at the product packaging and buy a product, they are actually looking for a lot more as to how is it relevant and how is it gonna make a difference in their lives. So just a short uh, introduction on how um, we look at this conversation and this topic. And uh, before we kind of get into more deeper questions, I would like to throw this question open to the panel uh, panelists and ask them if they could say a few words from their point of view as to how they have looked at customer segmentation and how are they reaching out to their customers, especially the journey in the last few years and where is it heading over the next few years? Um, I'd like to throw it open to uh, Vishal if you would like to start and give a few inputs or a few thoughts from your end before we move to other panelists. So very quickly, uh, 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 panelists and uh, uh, audience, uh, so it's become very important the way uh, customer segmentation is happening today. Uh, you know, it helps you identify the right cohorts of your audiences, customize your right messaging or build the right narrative to those cohorts. Uh, you know, it builds a 
uh, it gives you or even gives you better opportunities to create new products and services around those uh, segments of customers that you identified also uh, you know uh, ultimately it gives you the better return on money you know i'll give an example so for us uh, we quickly like identify customers uh, between active and non active loyalist and online competition and non buyer you know those kind of customers and then you can decide on what kind of dollar that you want to spend on and what kind of effort that goes into marketing in, into addressing those segments uh, ultimately it all points to into how segmentation is helping is you know delivering a better return on a dollar that's that's the ultimate uh, question that every marketer has to answer yeah. thank you so much vishal i truly agree return on investment is uh becoming ever increasingly more important not that it was not important before but i think it's come to the fore and center of it um dipti would you want to add a few more points from your end as we look at this conversation yeah sure uh happy to be here first of all good afternoon everyone um yes i think it's very important as vishal mentioned that it's very very important to understand what you know because customers today are not uh, the same across you know there are different type of customers there are different type of needs so understand uh, you know where they sit what their uh, wants and desires are and accordingly if you can tailor your product and your communication uh, there is a better uh, roi that one can get having said that i think this is this is as a, as a concept this has been been done ever forever you know i think the way it is being done now is changing because there are many different platforms and many different tools that we have as marketers today to understand and deep dive into uh the segmentation as well as the behavior today so yes absolutely uh very very uh, important for any marketer uh to look at it uh, in a holistic uh, you know overall kind of a way and manander how does this play out in an industry that you come from uh, where your customers are, are multifaceted you have a younger audience who are your direct consumers and you have an older audience which actually is a key decision maker and um, it's it's it'll be quite interesting to hear your viewpoint from a very different industry that you're from sure yeah hi pita thank you uh, the, that's a super interesting question right and like i said nothing exists out of context so uh, my my views on this are uh, going to be hugely colored by uh, the category that i operate in uh today right i i mean just for instance we are there in 10000 plus cities right when we talk about impact at scale that's the kind of scale we're talking about so it not not just different kind of audiences in terms of their age but even when you look at their income right for example something as simple as uh price uh, uh you know income elasticity right uh typically an elasticity of less than 1 would mean it's an essential good that you need to go over 1 uh the ratio would mean that it's somewhat of a luxury right uh just to put that in context uh education in india for any parent uh, uh is it falls in like about 0.9 uh, uh as income elasticity what that means is that they're going to and healthcare falls at 1.95 just to put that in context right so what that means is that any parent in india at any income level is going to want to invest more in education than healthcare itself that's crazy now when you try and understand things from this context how you segment the market how you segment the customers and then uh, your responsibility towards then delivering the right kind of value not just communication right but actually the right kind of value what is the service you're providing them what's the shape and form that product actually takes for that kind of a uh, segment radically changes right and <clears throat> one thing uh, also true to our category is that uh averaging out doesn't work at all uh you know when you got something so diverse uh because the solution for the average is actually a solution for no one in our category right so uh, in that sense yeah absolutely the shifts that we're seeing in uh how consumers behave and uh, therefore the responsibility of getting segmentation right uh is a make or break not just for the business and the brand but also for the people themselves because if they don't get the right products Uh, we can't create the right kind of value for them and in a category like education that's going to set the nation back a bit that's so true and and like you said you have to get your customer segmentation absolutely spot on um kunal how does this play out in your industry and where you're coming from i know it's it's very different from where manindra is so, so how does that play out for you 
Hey, good afternoon, Preeta. Thank you for the question. Good afternoon, everyone else. Um, so I'm going to answer it in this way that, uh, look, the world now and you know the world of brands and consumers now is pretty much similar to a modern retail outlet that we walk into. For a particular product, you'll see a hundred brands and it's up to the guy customer to walk in and figure out what he wants. Our category is that one right in the corner where it's kind of dimly lit right now because only 4% of uh, the entire population knows um, who we are, what we do. So although uh, rate of expansion is such that pretty soon I think we'll have lights installed and ECs also installed there. Um, but that being said, even in our category, right, it's, uh, and I'm going to quote, uh, I don't know if, you, if any of you have seen this movie called Patch Adams. Now, in Patch Adams, uh, Robin Williams is having this conversation with this guy called Arthur. And Arthur puts up four fingers and says, uh, what do you see? And uh, he says, four fingers. He says, no, look. And seriously look. And then he sees eight. So even in our category, we need to look beyond those one, two, three, four different kind of product segments and direct consumers and look beyond what their needs are and what they really want. So until we do that, um, and which we are doing, until we do that, and, and that multiplied by every other category on the planet, um, doesn't work. So of course, you know, customer segmentation, understanding their needs, and then delivering to them what they really don't even know they want at a certain point in time is, is the game. That I completely, completely agree with, because unless you tap into the latent need, that's prevalent but they're not aware of you're not going to get that first mover advantage and at the same time kind of could be relevant enough for them to adopt and you know consume your products so so when you work with uh, uh, brands across Rohit how does this play out I know because you've kind of worked with so many of them so what what is the shift that you've seen and how does this play out good afternoon everyone first of all it's good to be here um I think uh, for a specific question, Pritha, uh, customer segmentation, I think is extremely important, right? In the times that we are today, uh, the behavior of uh, consumers is changing a lot. I think their user preferences and behaviors online have drastically involved, uh, evolved. And all brands out there today are dealing with a digital first uh, target audience, right? With, with extremely unique needs. Now, in order to successfully build Brand Connect, First of all, you need to identify the needs of your users, right? And then map them to the right consumers. And in order to do this, I think that is where customer segmentation becomes extremely crucial. Uh, customer segmentation can help uh, what we've seen across the brands that we work with, right? Uh, it helps brands to be present at the right time and at the right place, right? Which effectively they can use to drive better engagement and conversations. Uh, we've seen, uh, you know, customer segmentation helping uh, in, in different aspects, right? The first one of that being increasing marketing efficiency, right? I think which uh, Vishal spoke about, right? In terms of how to drive better ROI at some point in time, right? So it helps brand to better understand their audience segments, right? To be able to effectively design better campaigns, uh, right? Uh, the second would be, it helps you identify new market opportunities. When I say that, uh, I mean, the, the market is ever evolving and, and the customer segments are also, you know, emerging and evolving. So the brands need to maintain a competitive edge in the market, right? That is where customer segmentation really helps. And then the third one is, uh, you know, it helps just improve overall distribution strategies or overall brand strategies, right? I think improvisation right now and evolution is critical for everyone, right? And, and I think knowing the market pulse and then better being able to segment your customers really uh, you know, uh, is the third area that that segmentation plays in. And then eventually, like once you have your customers, right, there is an ongoing connect that you need to maintain with your co consumers, which is more loyalty and retention, right? That is, again, you know, the next area where segmentation really helps and kicks in. Yeah, that's true. Connecting with your consumers constantly, tapping into those special moments that you can reach out to them and be relevant to them is going to be absolutely important once you get your customization right. Um, I know a lot of us have also touched upon uh, how does customer segmentation improvise and help deliver an exceptional customer experience. Um, Vishal, I'd like to hear a little more from your end, especially coming from a business that's been here for so long. How have you actually used customer segmentation to evolve your customer experience and create that unique experience for them? 
so Preetha and um, you know segmentations work for you know kind of help us define the propensity of, of a customer to you know discover you, sample you, and you know at the right time of what is the right time of conversion for him. And also kind of it back, you know, forms of feedback loop for my own sales team, for my own product teams, for the pricing, for the right value proposition for the customer key teams and all that stuff. Uh, it also kind of, you know, helps in, um, uh, so it has helped us, uh, you know, kind of identify unique needs and scale up some of the things which we even uh, didn't know existed. For example, we were very uh, surprised to discover that, you know, more mattresses are sold uh, through furniture shops, 45% than mattress shops, you know, that's, that's the discovery for us also. And then how do I, how do I address that channel? And how do I address this customer walking to that channel? You know, uh, in our case, which is a physical uh, led business. And of course, uh, uh, now uh, being uh, highly digitized, very rapidly digitized. Digital is a big, big space that has emerged uh, really uh, truly for us and how we can deliver you know, create up uh, lead funnels and, you know, deliver to the last mile uh, without a very painless way of discovering and buying to the customer. That has helped us uh, scale up. Uh, also, I, you know, uh, talking of the scaling up thing, I would say a couple of things. Um, you know, end of the day, marketers are demand creators and, you know, enablers of sales. We also need to think like salespeople, you know, end of the day, you have to have some experience of sales and product and, uh, you know, and not just be pure marketeers and create this opportunity for the business to grow. Uh, you know, things like uh, during COVID, we used the COVID time to actually scale up our physical business and the digital business, whereas the competitors were sleeping, literally in the sleep world. So it really gave us a lot of, you know, market uh, uh, size and uh, volumes, which they missed. Uh, we used that COVID as a good uh, time to, uh, we uh, are using Omni very rapidly now to scale up again in that segment, which nobody else is in our segment. Uh, but I would also caution, uh, you know, with the scale up also comes the uh, challenge of scaling up your teams, your own customer teams, sales teams, your channel teams, your uh, proposition, and they, they have to keep pace with your ideas. Otherwise, uh, you know, you cannot deliver the wrong thing to the customer. You scale up uh, for the sake of scaling up, but you know, end up creating a dissonance to the customer, that's, that's a no-no. So. Uh, I, I mean, completely agree on a lot of those points. I quickly wanted to check with both Dipti as well as Maninder on um, customer segmentation versus market segmentation. In many ways, uh, many people feel there's a huge overlap between the two, but um, how do you find that sweet spot so that you don't over segment and at the same time, you kind of reach the right audience? So. Um, Dipti, if you could talk a little more about that before we move on to Malinda to add a few more points. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, you know, as far as uh, aviation is concerned, and I'll give you a few examples from there. So, of course, market segmentation is extremely important for us as well because we are looking at, uh, you know, uh, going to new market, new, new destinations, et cetera, and, and studying those, A, in terms of demand and in terms of what is the existing product that's there. So, for example, if we are uh, going international, what kind of product? And by product, I mean what kind of aircraft is there? Is there? What kind of experience is, is, is already there in terms of? So, of course, there is product parity. And hence comes what kind of segmentation do you want to go after? So, of, you know, when we look at customer segmentation, there are two, three cohorts that we go after, maybe two cohorts that we go after, because you cannot talk to everybody. And looking at, you know, uh, in this space that we are in, which is the slightly premium, uh, you know, service that we, that we provide, uh, we look at which customers are price sensitive, which are not, which are say probably a little bit more uh, wanting to, uh, you know, experience and explore say a new product uh, and, and wanting a little bit uh, extra service, say at an ex a little bit of extra price. So they don't mind paying that, especially when you're doing long haul. So plus looking at what that market is, how is, how is sales, for example, how is media consumed there? You know, what, what channels do we use in, in that market? So segmentation from, uh, you know, in terms of all your demographics, psychographics, et cetera, plus what is your customer segmentation and which market kind of will, will allow you or which, how do you marry the two in those particular markets is very, very key, especially as far as, um, you know, aviation, as far as airlines are concerned. Because as I said, there is product parity. The only thing that, it, that you can do is a service differentiator. 
and looking at what extra you can give. So for example, in our, in our international flights, you would have seen our in-flight safety video, right? While it has nothing to do with, um, uh, you know, sales or, uh, or, or wanting anybody wanting to buy because of that, but it's a slightly different experience that we are giving, you know, and, and so these are small, small things that you kind of marry. So because nothing like this was done in the domestic market, of course, but even in the international market, only one or two airlines probably did it sometime back. So there is this like an opportunity that you find, and then you kind of connect, uh, you know, how this is. Apart from that, I think it's very, very important to look at the behavior of the customer. So what's happening in terms of market segmentation and customer segmentation, uh, you know, uh, and in that space, in terms of behavior, the, the kind of service or the kind of a product that we offer differs. And that's where you kind of create a wow. So uh, I think especially in a service industry that we are in, it's very, very important. That's, that's so enlightening and interesting to hear about how you use customer segmentation to enhance the experience and uh, service uh, differenti differentiation. So um, Manander, how does that work in your uh, line of business? Yeah, no, super interesting points from Deepti. Uh, uh, I'm going to come at it from the other end, right? Uh, for us, the, often the challenge, because we're sitting on enormous amounts of data, right? We just, uh, there's just so much of these tools and modeling that you can do, and there's no end to it, right? You can really split hair in terms of how deep you can go with the segmentation rabbit hole. Uh, the question that we find super useful is, you know, always asking us at what point do we stop? You know, uh, because uh, your question was around, how do you find that sweet spot, right? It's a bit of an art and a science. And internally at Vedanto, at least all of us are very, very mindful of what we don't want to be doing is boiling the ocean for the cup of tea, right? We want to know where to be able to stop. What is the right, I think Vishal spoke about it, which is super important is the ROI, right? The ROI on segmentation has to be greater than the expense of this entire exercise on segmentation. And for us, it plays out in very meaningful ways, right? There are no assumptions made. For example, when you're teaching a kid from thousands of miles away, you can have different models at play. You can have a one-to-one -one model, where there's just a teacher and a student life. You can have a one-to-few model. You can have a one-to-many model, where you've got 300 kids in the same class. Now, if you don't get your segmentation right, you don't know which model to apply. If you're not very, very deliberate or rigorous with your uh, analysis, you're going to uh, use broad brush strokes, right? That maybe one, one to many model is the right model in this ed tech category. And you're going to fail there because the needs of some parents with some kids is always going to be better served by one to one models, right? And so for us, when we talk about the experience layer uh, through customer segmentation, um, in education, experience is the education part of it. The experience is the learning, you know, so it's directly related to that. So for us, yeah, that's how we find the sweet spot, right? It's exactly knowing when to stop, what are the right abstraction of segments and how, how, how many of those are actually actionable, right? Through our targeting, can we even address those segments uh, so that in our experience serves us well? That's very interesting points being made by all our panelists. Um, I just want to go a little a little different from what we have been talking about, which is on segmentation and uh, market segmentation and customer segmentation. The last two years, we've seen a huge shift in the way people are um, being reached out to, people are being uh, communicated to. Um, there's a huge growth in digital consumption of content. Uh, we've seen people have got more access to the internet and to uh, devices and uh, content is becoming extremely important and a relevant content more than ever. So um, Kunal, this one's for you. In the digital space, how do you feel that customer segmentation and reaching out to customers has changed and evolved? And what does the role of content per se play when you kind of reach out or talk to your customers? Okay, so I'm gonna start off from the second part first about content, right? Like um, by the nature of the segment that I'm in, uh, it's more about in, in the nature of the company that I represent and we are working with. And our vision is to expand this category to get more and more Indians to start investing in new financial instruments. So by default for us, content is super important because 
especially uh, you know a conversion of a non buyer to a fence sitter and from a fence sitter to a trader or a transactor that that entire journey is kind of covered by the kind of content we put out so we focus a lot on of of our efforts uh, you know when it comes to uh, content right sorry what was the other part um and how have you seen the the consumption or or the adoption to digital and how has this played out in the last two years i know it's i mean for us it was uh, i mean i shouldn't say that and i sound very happy saying that but the pandemic really worked out for us uh i think uh, you know i mean it worked out in two ways right a people were at home and they were bored and unfortunately a lot of traditional income sources dried up so when you combine both of them it gave us a potent mixture of being at the right place at the right time with the uh, touch with the right product which enabled a lot of people to start uh, you know uh, trading and understanding and this is exactly what i said right at the beginning as well right content played a huge part because look it's it's like this you know dipping a toe in the pool and to see how cold the water is so content was the you know the the temperature graph for us and then that kind of helped us scale it for further and further and further and um and in terms of consumers i think uh we've not seen any we haven't seen any massive fragmentation in the kind of consumers coming in of course the largest contributors that we have are the millennials and among the millennials uh, one of the biggest chunks that we have and a dominant chunk is women so so for us that's something that you know as a, as a strategy and as a brand that's consistently worked for us i'm kind of glad to hear that that a huge number of uh, your consumers are women uh, it's it's a very interesting insight um also to share that a lot more people are coming on to social media more than ever uh they're leaning into communities uh they're looking at topics they're looking at uh, their areas of interest and engaging with people across passion points and uh, twitter provides an opportunity for people to virtually join into these conversations and be a part of communities uh so vishal when you uh, sorry rohit when you kind of uh, speak to your uh, clients how do they kind of how have they adapted and adopted to this shift because this shift has been a sudden shift it's not something that people i mean people were obviously adopting and adapting to uh, social and digital but the the last two years it's been kind of drastic a lot of them who were not too uh, active or in this space had to kind of pull up their socks and get get more active to be more relevant and to be there to catch the eyeballs of their consumers so how has this how have your um, the people that you work with how have they kind of embraced this change and what is it that you're seeing which is there or going to stay there for the future as we move along into 2022 so uh so i think to start with right i think uh we we all agree that you know uh, this i think the last couple of years were we saw a lot of digital transformation happen right so i mean the clients that we work with right they were pretty advanced clients right which have moved from i think even beyond personalization right i mean they're talking about hyper personalization right uh you know how to kind of they start segmenting more and more and there were a lot more traditional brands right which have now started to kind of come in uh, you know online so i think depending upon where or which life cycle or stage uh, you know at brand is we've seen all of them uh, you know rapidly move towards the digital marketing or digital uh, you know platform funnel um i think uh, we've done a lot of work right for example uh, we worked with clients like gcpl right uh they have they went from kind of you know launching just not a video communication but then they went from doing video communication in local languages right to to kind of build interest you know with their hyper personalized local audiences right is what uh you know what happened i mean similar examples uh you know were spotted where i mean for at least household stuff right women were the primary decision makers right but then brands went ahead and started targeting men right because i think they were spending a lot more time at home and then that is where they kind of you know needed to target different audiences right so this is this is more you know in depth uh, you know movement towards how do we personalize better right uh, i think while all of this has happened right uh, i think kunal was speaking about um, uh, you know how their audience is millennials and and how they've done a lot of work in kind of you know uh, putting the content out there right we've seen a lot of brands face challenges uh, you know when they tailor their marketing communication out right uh, what's the best way to do it i mean sometimes uh, how much personalization is too much personalization right i mean that is the question that everyone 
uh, keeps asking because they want to be relevant but they don't want to be intrusive right uh, and i think that's the uh, i mean we see majority of brands kind of solving for that uh, everyone does want to target relevant folks and get the better roi and as well as reach more and more audiences right but they do want to be kind of you know very uh, uh, you know uh, careful about how they are being pursued with their customers and existing on you so yeah a lot of changes have happened that i would say in the last couple of years on on all multiple fronts and vishal how do you see this being played out uh, i know you said that you've kind of expanded during this phase mm-hmm. but have you kind of redone your whole communication mix and looked at it from a different lens we have completely redone our communication mix we had to do that in fact uh, you know we in fact we're going to become an important talking segment for us also where is 90% of the uh, you know audience was men and we've looked at women products we've looked at new things uh, you know instead of talking of comfort which is essentially what we sell we talk we talk of health and hygiene and you know things like mattress cleaning and it's new services that have been born out of that uh things like you know uh, so it's also the important i i feel you know what deepthi said uh, what is the consumer behavior right now you know what uh, space uh, in the mind space or the you know life space is in is in his lifetime at this point of time and then you know kind of uh, uh, you know customize your products and your value propositions and your pricing and offerings around that set the right cadence in the narrative you know set the right messaging uh, also kind of you know um, i i feel you have to feel there's a person behind that entire segment and data there's a living person behind it you know behind that data set so how do you how do you value his time and you know what is what he needs at this point in time it could be it could be safety it could be need for more regionalized communication or regionalized way of reaching him it could be things like cultural markers that he keeps uh, you know feels more comfortable with it could be people like uh, today getting more environment conscious do you want is your is your product or you know services that offering is is it more environment conscious so things like that is what is helping us kind of segment it and uh, you know uh, make more customizable messaging and products more snackable content if i may call it and uh, drive that to the customers Yeah, and it's really paying off now. That's that's interesting. The shift that marketers have to have had yeah. to do and how they had to adapt. Um, with the quick question, uh, how do brands now move beyond personalization in tailoring their communication? Especially, uh, you come from an industry which has had its fair shares of ups and downs in the last two years, and things are. i mean travel is coming back in many ways and uh, i think uh, people are longing to go back and travel and uh, and uh, how so how do you kind of look at your communication how do you kind of make sure that what you say and do is extremely relevant today and it's constantly changing and fast changing so how do you kind of keep pace with that yeah sure so let me go a bit step back because you know uh this this has been really really dynamic for us so our business is based on movement of people right which did not happen for the last one and a half years or two years and then when it started to happen it was almost like we restarted the airline because you know there are slots and there are so many things that you need to kind of uh, again redo or kind of you know reapply and things like that having said that uh in terms of communication to the customer there are two type of communication as 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 we see it one is what you what is your transaction which is uh, you know around your ticket around your what any other ancillary product that you have bought around your flight and things like that and the other is how you engage having said that now when covid happened of course a lot of communication around transaction kind of dipped uh, that was not happening or if it was happening it was very very relevant to that specific flight or whatever uh, but at the same time we had to kind of really talk about you know what what we are doing as as an airline when we restarted so after the two and a half months of lockdown we restarted everything right we we started to fly but with a lot of uh you know say guidelines and tests and things like that which had to be communicated so that had to become very personalized just to give you one small example if i'm taking a flight from delhi to bombay and actually that that is relevant today as well if i'm taking a flight from delhi to bombay there is a certain requirement of maharashtra if i'm taking a flight to delhi to bangalore there's a certain requirement for karnataka and how am i to personalize that communication so it it's a big challenge right plus the journey on 
button on our website in terms of communicating what needs to be done. So, so the government said that you have to do a self-declaration form, for example, and that has to be in the booking window. So there's a huge you know, backend technology uh, change that we had to make in, in the booking flow, which means it's, it's a huge job actually for any, any airline or any uh, service industry. So that kind of personalization we had to go to, and, and we still do it. If today I'm sending an SMS saying, you know, your flight is blah, 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 check the uh, travel, uh, check the state guidelines. So that link has to be very personalized, personalized for that specific uh, consumer, right? It's a huge challenge because government also kept changing. Now, uh, other than that, you know, beyond personalization, you know, if you were to talk about um, of course, there are many, many things. So you look at the look at the um, behavior of, of of the of the consumer, right? There are, and and of course, we know our business class and we know our PY consumers, etc. How have they behaved? What have they looked at? What what are their wants and desires? What did they kind of you know? Uh, so there are loyalty uh, members that we have. What is it that they want every time? Who travels? What and accordingly offer. So uh, to give you an example again. Uh, once, so how we have come to this uh, going beyond personalization per to say, and to generate revenue out of it as well, is that if I have booked a ticket today, um, you know, I actually cross sell and upsell and cross sell and upsell is a very, very, uh, a very generic term, but, but it goes to the detail of what level that member is, what business class he has booked now, or what cabin class he has booked now. And, and what is it that I can cross sell? So for example, if I have booked a, a premium economy, uh, obviously uh, it doesn't make sense to talk about any other services or privileges that you get if you're sitting in economy, right? And especially if you're a Club Vistara member, then it gets even further tiered to that. So it's a combination of what your travel, what your transaction is, plus what your behavior has been or what your stature has been with us. So that's on the transaction side. On, on the other side, which is typically on the communication side, side, you know, you basically go a little beyond personalization and you take a higher stand. So for example, in during COVID, like when we went after the second uh, lockdown, uh, sorry, before the second lockdown, uh, second wave was just about coming. And we said, stay home, stay safe, don't fly. Even though it's, you know, it's counter uh, uh, to, to the business, but uh, you have to kind of take a higher ground and, and you tell your customers. And it was not just a mass campaign that we did on time digitally, but it was also, we communicated to our members and we said that, you know, don't, uh, don't travel if it's not essential. So sometimes you have to do that kind of a mix. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, going forward, uh, we only hope that we are able to better, we are able to sharpen and we are able to look at uh, what kind of relevant and uh, timely messaging and timely service and product that we can offer. And again, it's, it's, it boils down to the same thing that you don't want to over communicate. You don't want to, you know, you want to draw that line. So uh, yeah, keep it relevant, keep it timely and, and arrive at what can, can happen at what time, at, at, at that particular time, given the circumstances uh, and that, that's the key. That's true. Uh, nothing exists without context. And uh, I know, Maninder, you have spoken about uh, value and need-based segmentation and intimacy at scale. So how does this flow for your business where, um, you know, you have an audience which is very diverse and you have a market which is very spread out and behavior consumption patterns which are very different. So how does how does your communication and personalization and segmentation all merge and marry together? Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, Pita, uh, the entire single-minded mission is impact at scale, right? We want to be able to get uh, a child studying in India the best possible teacher, right? Which is not necessarily what happens because you're trying to find somebody within your pin code, somewhere closer to you. So you're working within your means, right? You're not necessarily optimizing for what's best for the child. You're optimizing for what's possible for the child, right? So uh, the ambition here is, of course, impact at scale. You want to be able to get the best teacher for every child, but you want to also do it for every child in every nook and corner of the country, right? Doesn't matter if the kid is sitting in Mizoram or in 
uh, Delhi, right? It really doesn't matter. You want to be able to create that level of impact at that level of scale. Uh, we cannot do that. And that's where segmentation plays a huge part. We can't do that without having intimacy at scale, right? You want to be operating at scale, but you still want to be intimate. You want to be able to understand the fears, motivations, aspirations of every one of them. We are also part of a category where there is a huge distinction between the customer and the consumer. Uh, a lot of times the customer is the parent, the consumer is the kid. The kid could be three years old, the kid could be 15 years old. Uh, so there's massive differentiation, right? That goes. So uh, uh, again, uh, everything that happens here is again, uh, basis first principles, uh, two principles that really hold uh, us grounded is one is, uh, I think again, Vishal had alluded to that, but data is people in disguise, right? For us, that's the job to be done very clearly. Understand who are the people behind this, what are their fears, what are the most uh, uh, aspirations. You spoke about unstated needs, right? Latent needs. Uh, that's hugely important, right? What are you reading through the funnel? What's the data telling you about these people? That's one. Uh, and of course, there is crazy amount of science to how we go to the market, right? In terms of uh, uh, media strategy, our targeting, when we go on OTTs, the role of content, uh, how we choose between open options and PG deals, uh, all of that happens. But there's an equally important part, which is the art of it, right? Uh, and like Sir John Hegarty said, all of the information goes through your heart, not your head. Uh, and that is super important to us. Right? What are you going to do with such level of insights if you can't then translate it into something that melts uh, your heart, right? So for us, the litmus test for any piece of communication uh, we're trying to craft is that, is it one mind opening, of course, uh, but equally important, is it heart opening, right? Does it uh, really warm uh, those guys? Does it level, uh, 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 create a level of empathy with parents, with students uh, and uh, not a one size fits all, right? Even for the same person, for the same child at different levels when they're studying in class what's the kind of nudges you know we've all grown up in school systems where the only nudge we got was the teacher throwing a chalk at us <laughs> well, that's completely changed right the pace of communication internally now with technology is completely changed the kind of nudges and motivations that a child gets in class today are radically different and no two children get the same nudge uh, and there are 300 students sitting and they all feel like they're sitting on the first bench you know, that's crazy. That's almost like magic. But that's what's happening in our category today. That's what we're delivering, right? At scale. Uh, similarly for parents, right? Somebody who's worried about how their kid is going to be doing. How You don't have to wait six months or one year to figure out what happened and then do a post-mortem on that, right? You're getting a daily analysis of how your kid is doing and you can really do something about it in real time. All of this is part of communication, right? Not necessarily branding. Uh, but that's how we do it. So uh, uh, the most important point that enables us to do is, is we're not looking at demographics and all of that anymore, right? We're looking not also only at attitudinal data. We're looking at behavioral data. <laughs> that's magic, right? When you look at behavioral data, people are always going to tell you something, but they're going to behave in the worst self, right? And that's what we're looking at. And that's what we are then picking out and saying, you know, what's actually at play here? Pick up the phone, speak to a couple of them, and then go back and then try something. So that's how we're going about it. That's extremely interesting, I must say. And um, we've always said in many ways that uh, Twitter is the largest public forum of human thought. People keep coming and sharing their experiences. And uh, um, a lot of um, the inputs that come and what people share actually influences behavior in many ways. Um, so while we kind of Look, look at wrapping this, wrapping up this discussion. I want to kind of throw this question out to each panelist. Uh, as we move into the next year, and we've seen a change um, over the last two years, and we don't know what the future holds for us, but it, I know it's going to be um, kind of dynamic. It's not going to be one of those phases where we be like, oh, we figured it out. It's never going to be, oh, we figured it out. Uh, we don't know what's there uh, at the next step. Uh, so I want to understand, I'll start with you, Kunal, on how do you think this whole customer segmentation, communicating to customers, as well as uh, identifying those needs of those customers uh, is going to evolve and change as we move into 2022. And what are the pro tips you would give to our audience and marketeers who are listening in to, you know, kind of keep in their mind as they plan their way into the next year? 
Oh, that's a great question. Thanks. All right, so <clears throat> let's start from 30,000 feet above and then come to land, so as to speak. Look, uh, from a 30,000 feet perspective, when I'm talking about personalization, the flip side of the coin is expectations. And once a marketer, and, and, and this expectation is different for customers at different price points. So just to give you, you know, go deeper into it, the expectation of, of, of a customer who's going to a Dhaba to eat a Dal Makhni is going to be very different from the expectation of if he's going to Taj or Maurya. Similarly, a Goer and a Vistara, right? Whether he's pre economy class of Goer versus economy class of Vistara, the expectation in his mind would be at a certain level. So the trick for a marketer is to A, understand that expectation level, right? Now comes a question of do I match it or do I go beyond now that invariably comes down to the numbers game to go beyond if the cost versus revenue number is in the green, then by all means, go ahead, because that's the wow factor and the differentiating factor that you're going to build into your product. Then coming down further, uh, especially, you know, in a, in, in a digital first category, because that's where we're all moving, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, uh, the biggest folly of any brand to think that he's there is a loyal customer whether of the category of the or of the product or of the brand because if he's for example even if he's buying something as simple as a toothbrush he's going to go to at least 10 sites and do the reviews right so therefore once he does land on your site there needs to be consistency in communication so while there is there is there is of course there is this uh, latent uh, you know uh, bug that all marketers and every brand has that i'm going to be as personalized as possible there needs to be consistency in messaging as well um, so that being done, if, and of course, then the biggest thing, and I think that's something that we all need to figure out on when it comes to either segmentation or personalization or anything that the biggest thing we all need to work on is to build trust with that guy. Because unless that is done, anything or the other that you're doing is not going to work. So, yeah, I think pretty much, uh, that and, um, not go too deep into trying to understand each and every nuance of a human being, because. Unfortunately, um, all human beings are different and we live anyways in a country where every 100 meters the country changes. So the tech guys are going to basically kill us if we go that granular. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree. I've, I've, I mean, as a person who's traveled the length and breadth of this country, I can, I can second, third and fourth that point. Uh, but I, 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 kind of, I'm, I, I really agree with uh, your other points on building trust consistency in your communication and more importantly being authentic in everything you say and do and show up for what you say and not say something for the sake of saying so um i, I like uh, you know uh, rohit if you could talk about how you encourage your the brands that you work with um and what is it that you feel that they should look out for as you move into 2022 I think, uh, I mean, we've had a, a great discussion, first of all, about personalization and segmentation, right? But I think while we do this, uh, the entire personalization and segmentation cannot happen in pockets, right? There are different marketing platforms and digital strategies that marketers are using and and kind of, you know, uh, for, for kind of meeting their customer goals, right? But I think all the platforms need to talk to each other. I mean, if, if it starts happening in pockets, then it's it's a mess, right? And I think therefore it is important to come up with that unified strategy. Uh, I would say 360 degree view of, you know, what your customers are doing on different platforms and then communicating with them. And I think in order to do justice to personalization, I think it's, it's a heavy task, right? Is I would say, because every customer right now is unique. So I think there is definitely a lot of invest investment needed in, in building scalable ecosystems to be able to personalize properly. Right? So I think brands need, do need to invest a lot in in you know customer uh, data platforms analytical tools and then not just tools right you need to also have the right people and the talent to be able to do this right so i think uh, those are at least you know a few things from my side that that marketers and brands should look out there as they move into 2022 so all data is good as is but it's not going to be useful if you can't mine it and get those insights from it so that's that's absolutely true and I like the idea on synchronous communication so that you, what you say and do is consistent across the board. So um, how would you look at it, Vishal, as you look at your business going into 2022? What are the few things that you think you're gonna be? A couple of things, I'll take it from the other speakers, uh, what Kunal spoke about, you have to, you know, to build trust and credibility, you have to be consistent. You have to be 
you know, you have to really at the intersection of the physical and the digital world, how seamless and painless the journey you can build for the customer. That's extremely important, either in discovery, sampling or purchase, you know. Uh, secondly, I would say, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, data we all use, we all say data is God and segmentation is even better. But, uh, you know, over all that data and what Maninda said, you can't do really micro segmentation, you know, you as a marketer, you have to, you've had your failures and successes and you have to use your marketer's instinct you, when you know your business, your uh, sales guys uh, inputs, your channel inputs, and you know, put it on top of the data. And you know, with that mix, come to the human benefits, delivering you human benefits and not just, you know, product and service benefits. When you start delivering human benefits, I think that is a win-win for both the, both the customer and the brands. Finally, you know, uh, I would say, uh, and uh, as again, what Maninda said, uh, with the micro segmentation and too much of data, you know, there has to be a minimal uh, viable proposition, viability to the business or whatever you're trying to offer. I mean, that is very, very important. You know, that's the only way to succeed in, in the next year. Thank you so much. I know we need to, brands need to show their human side and uh, it's important. Um, Dipti, how would you look at this and what would you say or your pro tips for marketing as they look at 2022? Well, I think uh, what your product delivers is the key because that's how you build trust. So if your product delivery, whether it's a platform, whether it's a service, whether it's uh, you know any other product that, that you're, that has to be of a certain uh, quality, a certain service and a certain stature consistently because then otherwise the trust is lost. And I say this largely because you know we are in a service industry, uh, a customer flying uh, you know, maybe four times, five times a month uh, has one bad experience, will will really talk about that bad experience more or will remember that more. And then in the recovery of that is going to be far, far more difficult. So as far as trust is concerned, it's it's a uh, I mean stick to the basics that you that your your uh, that you you know the value proposition that you are saying. So whatever that is, stick to that and deliver it consistently. Now on top of that, uh, if you want to create that stickiness and if you want to create that personalization and 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 you're asking me, you know, what is it that going next year? I mean, what is it that we will look at? Um, on top of that, build a layer of what you, how you can create that wow. And that's where your segmentation and, and customer behavior and et cetera comes in. So for example, we are delivering say a good service or a good product. On top of that, whatever service you're doing, you bundle it or you, you power it with, However, that particular customer has behaved or whatever you know about that customer, that is powerful, right? So that's the kind of wow you will create. And then it, it, it comes back to the trust. It comes back to brand stickiness. So, uh, you know, you have to look at it, look at it like that. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you're just doing things for the sake of it. And, and it, you know, you will see it like a cyclical thing and it will keep going up and going down. I mean, today every brand or every product will must be doing their, you know, scores. So like we do our net promoter scores and we know every month we know which area of which, which department needs that kind of improvement. So whether it is a crew that needs training or whether it is the food that needs to be, you know, uh, bettered or whether the aircraft has some issue in terms of broken seats or whatever, that kind of feedback you have to, and you have to deliver that product consistently at, at a certain quality. And, and as I said, then back it up with as much personalization as you can to create that wow. But, but don't go overboard because you know customers also don't like uh, to see that there is a lot of, so when I say uh, as much personalization, as much personalization that is relevant, you know, uh, so, so stick to that. So that's what I would say. Use data in a way that you are you are reaching to the heart of the customer, as you said, that we are all humans, and uh, we need to. And travel is a very very involved uh, category. Uh, I mean, you will get you know you would want to book yourself. You would want to make a choice of that airline or or of that hotel. So it's very very critical. Thank you so much for those thoughts. I'm sure they're going to be invaluable. Uh, Manindar, closing thoughts on how brands and marketeers should look at 2022? Oh, yeah, I, I'd speak for myself and I'd maybe at the risk of being too boring, uh, focus on execution, right? There's a whole lot of theory around 
uh, all of this, right? Uh, but uh, like the, uh, I mean, uh, going to what Mike Tyson said, right? We've all got a plan till we're punched in the face. Uh, the rubber hits the road, not in the boardrooms, right? The rubber hits the road when the uh, academic counselor is calling a parent and talking to them about what the brand is, what Vedantu stands for. If that counselor does not understand segmentation, does not understand who he's speaking with, who she's speaking to, what are they, uh, you know, what's driving them, what's, what are their fears, motivations, if they don't have a sense of that persona, it's all going to come undone, right? Uh, so the, the big part for us, uh, the focus for the next year is actually going to be having done all of this exercise, having invested so much, uh, so much in it. How do you actually transmit this? How do you actually cascade this to the front lines? How are they going to talk about what they've understood from this entire exercise and then use that meaningfully to actually deliver the right kind of value to the right kind of families who are coming to us, right? They're reaching out to us with an aspiration that might possibly change the child's life. You don't want a gap there, right? You want the person to be understanding. So this is, uh, you know, my favorite, I think marketing is too important to be left to marketeers alone. Uh, you have to have this cascade. You have to have this understanding become a shared understanding within the org. And we are the 7,000 people organization. If 40 people understand segmentation, we're doomed. We're finished. So uh, that's going to be the priority for 2022. Just focus on execution. I know the the God lies in the detail and mm -hmm. and um, you can never ever let go of that no matter what you do in marketing because if you don't get the execution right your strategy may be the best in the world but you're certainly setting yourself up for failure so I would like to say thank you to all of you this was one of the most engaging discussions that I've been part of um, I hope our audiences um, did um, take, take away a lot from this. I certainly did. And I certainly will use some of these as I go into next year. Um, so a big thank you and, um, uh, and hope to stay in touch with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Preeta, for uh, moderating it so wonderfully. And thank you to all our panelists for their uh, respective uh, perspectives. Thank you once again. Thank you.